is the realest. Grab my new merch at engageind.com. David Adesonia, your uncrowned 145 pound champion, here with former two time UFC middleweight champion Israel, the last star bender, Adesonia. It hurt me to say that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I was like, wait, stop, <laughs> you're <in> a funeral. <laughs> I swear, I was like, that was just a eulogy. <laughs> that was, that was, that was, that was, I think that's my own heart. Uh, yeah, I heard that. I was like, Ugh. why do you say it like that? Uh, what do you mean by that? That was emotional damage. <laughs> emotional. <laughs> emotional damage. Yeah. Whew. All right. It's breathe, okay. breathe, breathe. Why are you sweating? I don't know, nigga. <laughs> oh, <sweats. laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Damn, He's dude. actually sweating. We back, we back. We're back. <laughs> oh, whatever. Hold on, it's out of the way. Yeah. All right. Now we here, we here. We here. Uh, we are one week removed from the mm. fight. How are you feeling? Mm, feeling. How am I feeling? Mm, about the fight itself. Everything. Break it down to however you want to break it down. Mm, how am I feeling? I'll put it the bit quietly confident, quietly confident. And that's after watching the fight. I was like, oh yeah, I see. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Uh, you watched the fight back. Uh, have you only seen it the one time or have you gone back to watch it again? No, nah, just once. I watched and it again. that was a couple of days ago? Yeah. What was the experience like even watching it? Watching it, I was just like, oh, okay, you just gotta fucking pull this back. You've seen me, even if I've had fights that I, I won, but I wasn't really satisfied. I was just like, Ugh, I don't want to watch that shit, you know. Um, but I just watch it anyway, just so I can learn from it. And yeah, this is no different. I wasn't happy with the performance. So I was like, Ugh, don't want to watch this, but I have to watch it just so I can learn from it. As soon as I watched it, and it's the same reaction every time, I'm like, oh, that wasn't that bad. Like I say, even fights that I've won, and I'm like, oh, it probably looks shit. You know, it wasn't as da 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 and I watched it, I'm like, oh yeah, that wasn't that bad. So this was the same thing. I was like, oh, that wasn't that bad. So I was just like, the way I felt in there was different than how it looked. How did you feel in there? How did I feel in there? How did I feel in there? Uh, like a bad dream. Like, you know, one of those dreams where you... Lucid nightmare or something? Like, just like, not even a nightmare. Like, nightmare is like, oh shit, fuck. Oh, That's what like I feel a bad like dream. Dream. I, was, I was projecting. <laughs> 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 no, but I like where it's like, you know, you're scared. But this is like, oh, just like, why is this not, like, you try and hit the guy and just feels like noodle arms, like, just like, what the fuck? Like, it's not. So, yeah, that just felt like a like a bad dream. But, um, hmm. Yeah, feeling it and watching it completely different. They called Eugene right afterwards and we talked to him. Same thing. We're quietly confident. While you were in there, did the fight go fast or did it go slow? How did it feel? Surprisingly fast. Surprisingly, I didn't even know it was the last round. I was like, is this the last round? He's like, it's the last round. I was like, fuck. I was like, okay, like, vamanos. Like, you need to, <laughs> you need to do something. So, but yeah, it was just, it's just the way I felt in that fight wasn't, yeah, it was just, yeah. But again, this is also the way he worked. He, he just never let me get into my rhythm at Let's all. Let's talk about it. Yeah, what are some of the things that he and his coaches did well? Because um, they were pretty, I mean, they were pretty upfront. Everyone knew what their game plan, mm -hmm. the game plan was going to be. Forward pressure, cut you off. I and he said he was willing to give one to take one. Yeah. Yeah, but um, just wasn't able to like just get my rhythm because of his pressure. He was right there constantly. And whenever I was setting him up because he's right there, then his coach would help him. And I'd be like, fuck. And yeah, it was just good game plan from their end, but also for me. I wasn't able to adjust on the fly. I wasn't able to adjust on the fly. And we can break that down another time. But no, nah, it was just, it was his night. It was his night. And yeah, he got it done. I made another dream come true. <laughs> Talk about how good his defense was. Because at some stage um, during the fight, you mentioned that you couldn't find, find yeah, your, your jab. jab. Yeah, even like, I said it before the fight. I, I think his, his, his guard is like just real unique and unorthodox. So... I was able to find this. I wasn't able to find my jab, and I'm I'm able to find my jab. I can find the chin. I'm I'm, I'm very confident in that. But yeah, it was just his guard was just good. It was good, good defense, and good offense. Well-rounded game. 
Let's talk about the first round. He rocked you and, and dropped you with a, a right straight. What was your own initial reaction to that like? Because we saw, you know, people's reactions on the internet. Rogan yeah. almost had a heart attack. Like, <laughs> 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 Rogan's eyes almost popped out of his head. Like, couldn't even... I, see, I haven't seen many of them yet. But, um, yeah, mine was like, this nigga just dropped me. And I started kind of like laughing a little bit. And at one point I looked at Mark Gordon. You can find the clip in the frame. And I was just like, I'm okay. But I was just like, and then right afterwards, we disengage, and I feel like, right, I'm clear, I'm lucid, back on the attack. And then it was five seconds or something left, so then I went back to my corner. But I remember I was, I was what awake. What did Eugene say? Mm, I was out of position. Like, I, I, I was out of position, and I tried to use uh, a lead hook counter, but he just, pop up the rhythm. That's not what Eugene said, but like Eugene just pretty much said I was out of position. But when I look back at it now, it's just his timing. The one, two was offbeat, pop up, and then just got me in between in the rhythm. It was good. It was a nice shot, clean. And then the barrage as well, I was like, oh shit, he's pouring it on. I was like, he's really punching me. <laughs> I was like, I'm okay, ref. <laughs> but it was just, I was literally, I was like, this motherfucker's punching me. Like, yeah. Um, you recovered well. You came back in the second yeah. round and you won the second round. You didn't look like, you know. Yeah. Again, I don't like to brag about, oh, good to Like, it's a stupid thing to brag about. But no, nah, I know how to recover well from certain shots. Um, I am human, so yeah. But uh, yeah, it was, it was just well timed shot, well, nicely executed. Bah -bah. It's cool. Nice. You came back, second round, second round was good. Like I said, you looked clear. Um, you won the second round. And then talk to me through what's going on as the you know the third round starts and he's still frustrating you he's still you know disrupting your rhythm you, you can't land he's uh what's going through your mind as you mm. you feel the fight slipping away from you as i feel the fight slipping away i wasn't even scoring the fight but i just knew like nigga you're losing the fight but in there it was just like, like i said it was just felt like I, I just felt like my arms were just like noodles or how did you feel warming up in the back mm, felt better i have felt better in the back when i'm just like fuck, i'm shot but yeah i don't know just in there just felt like a bad dream and it's my arms were just noodles like weren't I had no snap i had no like and it just felt weird at one point i was just like i knew it was like, i gotta finish this guy I got to finish this guy, oh, and I tried. I set him up a couple of times. You know, he defended a well, corner helped him out, guiding him well. And then I just, okay, just try and find something and don't get caught. Especially in the last round, I was like, make sure, don't get caught. So I don't like fighting like that. I like fighting to win and not to just, you know, not on the defensive primarily, yeah. I like to be offensive in certain situations, like in the last round. Okay, we gotta go. And, but I just couldn't go. What were your coaches telling you in between rounds as the fight was playing out? Because Eugene said there was a bit of a disconnect with what they were seeing and trying to communicate that to you and... Maybe I wasn't, I wasn't tapped in. Maybe I just, like sometimes just lag, a little bit of lag. Because you know, even after he told me what he meant, and I was like, ah, oh, he wanted me to, you know, when he talked about that, and I was like, oh, okay, bet that's what he that's what he meant. Like just a little bit of a lag between communications, I think. Yeah. Mm. Is that like also you not being as locked in mentally going into that fight? Because the comparison from two eight seven to two ninety three is like. Someone said something to me. I think it was A A B. AB said, he said as soon as the opponent switched, he said like almost instantly, it was like, I went from, with Drakus, I went like, I'm gonna fucking kill this dude. Like I was, I had this thing about me. He said like when the opponent switched, he just noticed, I was like, okay, I'm gonna whoop this dude. Like I'm gonna whoop this dude. Like I, going from, I'm gonna murder this motherfucker. I'm gonna fucking kill this guy to, oh yeah, I'm gonna whoop this dude. So, so that's something AB just happened to mention. I found that interesting. I didn't, I didn't, I, then I was like, yeah, I 
I did notice that, I guess. How much pressure did you even feel going going into that fight and during fight week? Yeah, I put well, a lot of pressure on myself because in my head I was like, you know, I have to beat this guy no matter what. I have to beat this guy. So I, did, I, I put pressure on myself. There's is, is, is the outside pressure, but the pressure you're putting yourself as well. But yeah, I put pressure on myself, but I, I, I'm still kind of like dissecting it. So yeah, I put pressure on myself, but I just didn't have that venom. I think I, it's that venom, I didn't, mm, yeah. Interesting, all right. I thought you'd get the venom from the, you know, trash talk and, you know, everything mm. that. Yeah, like, I mean, definitely some of the stuff, hell, it's not, it's not over. The story's still being written, but like, I talked to Eugene about certain things as well, and then we, we know exactly what to do. Yeah, we know exactly what to do, leading on to the next one. Before the fight, you know, we sat here and we talked about how, you know, in some alternate universe and some different timelines, Strickland wins the fight. And it was, um, you know, our job to make sure that... It's on this timeline. Uh, yeah, mm. that didn't happen. When it was all said and done yeah. and they announced and knew and, you know, everything played out. What were those, you know, initial emotions like? Uh, every time after a fight, no matter when you win or lose, I just feel a sense of relief, like, oh, well. So there's no relief of anything, but just like, oh, well, made it up. And that one, you know, the and camp okay and everything, and... healthy, fine. So that's that. That's the main thing, being healthy, being fine from the camp. And, there, you know, even though there's all these little things that happen during the camp, but, like, overall, healthy, wealthy. And, yeah. Initially, I was just like, oh, well, good job. First thing I said to him, because he starts crying, I'm like, hey. Stop crying like a bitch. He starts laughing. I'm like, hey. And then we talked about, yeah, other stuff. I was like, don't, don't bring my family into this. And he's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And yeah, changed his tune at the post fight though. <laughs> it's weird. I was like, like when we have like a real moment and it's genuine, it's like, oh, hey. He's a politician. Yeah, yeah. But still, it's just like, I guess he has to keep up appearances. But I just find it weird how you have a real moment and then like, yeah, it's all good. Keep it real. Mm. You still went to the after party. Mm. You, know, you still, you know, had fun. Took photos of, of fans. Three, three of us won, so it's still a like an accomplishment. Even if we're all, like, doesn't matter. Like what we've done, we still have to celebrate because look where we come from, how far we've come, and to be able to to even do that, Sydney, six fighters from CKB with a new signee go in there and do what we did is. Just, so presidents, and so yeah, we have to celebrate no matter what, even the small wins. So yeah, and plus there's a lot of work that you know goes into, into it. Yeah, everything. Let's talk about the boys actually. Yeah. Um, I'll interview them as well. Mm. Kevin starting the night off. Fuck banger. <laughs> yeah, banger. He just Kevin just went in there and just like kicked the door in and said like everybody on the fucking ground and yeah, it's it's him. It's just. <laughs> It's just good to see because I, 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 we all know how Ke how good Kevin is. So the fact that he went in and did the way he did and just at the mic starts calling out Ian Gary already, calling out whoever else, like going at everyone. But that's Kevin. He just, I know how good he is. So, yeah, it's a good job. He kicked the night in, kicked the night off well for the boys. Um, and let me see. Mm. Like, uh, I don't want to go too much into Diamond and Chain because sour subjects, I don't want to go too much into that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, you yeah. know, highest of highs, lowest of lows. That's the game, Especially when you're part of the team. Like, you know what I mean? Three wins, three three, three losses. That's right. We're talking about Carlos. Yeah, a loss, yeah. Just... What a performance from him. But people won't even know. It's what he had to go through leading up to the fight through the camp and during fight week as well. I don't know if he's talked about it publicly, so I won't, but like... That's championship medal. That's how yeah, you... Yeah, he just, during the camp, it was just some bad injuries that he had to nurse. And then during fight week, bad injuries he had to nurse, <laughs> like bad. And um, going in there and then being him the way he did. And last, I'm glad they finally used the replays to, you know, consolidate what happened. So That's right, the guy was out. Yeah, mm. he tapped, 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 and it was out, but... If, if they didn't use the replay, they don't missed it. It wouldn't have been his first submission win. So it was good. Yeah, it was good for the team. Also Tyson as well. That was perfect. That was like storybook night for Tyson. Had the perfect villain and missed the pleasure, man. 
And I love the fight name. Uh, <laughs> the way the guy was carrying on, even before the fight started, like his antics, it was like, uh, Tyson was like, bet. I went in there and just starched him. And then like a cold celebration. Ah, gang, I was fucking, that was, that was tight. Mm, so yeah, and also doing it in his home, yeah, yeah, in his own backyard, yeah. It's fucking storybook night, yeah, so that was cool. Talk to me about your first post-fight shower. My first post-fight shower was after the after party, after all the noise. You didn't shower before the after party? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, was in there dirty. I was just like, nah, nah. It was a little moist, but still. Um, yeah, it was just, uh, there's not much I can say to you guys, but it was one of those ones where I just, I made some, some tough calls. I was like, yeah, right. Cause then I was like, it's, you know, you're alone and you get to have that real conversation. So I was like, right, this is what I have to do now. So I know what I have to do. And it was just, it didn't take long to be honest. I already knew it, but then it was good to just like face myself and just like, yep, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, you gotta do that. And I'm like, all right, bet. And yeah. Dana said you looked slow and flat in there. You know, a lot of people, the general contenders was, that's not Israel, the last time that I did something like that they saw at 293. You know, your, your last three fights, UFC 281, 287, 293. That's three title fights in the last 10 months. You know, everyone praises you for being an active champion. I'm pretty sure yeah. you are the most active three champion in really? 10 months, yeah. Well, it was April, no, 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 November. Mm. Uh, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, September. August. August, September, okay, 11 months. 11 months, mm, still. Yeah. But yeah, I think that makes you, I mean, the n number of title fights that you've had, um, including those ones, I think that makes you the most active champion mm. in UFC history. I don't know, we'll see. But How um, much, I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure you are. Mm. How much of a toll does it take on you physically and mentally? Mm. Going in there, back to back camps. Uh, it does. Yeah, it, it takes a toll. But again, like I said, I'm human. I'm just, I understand what I have to do to get back to who I am. And you know, it's funny as well. What? I've seen a little bit like you know they chirp, they they delight my demise and whatnot. But um, it's funny how they all say like, if I face that version of Israel, if I face that version of Israel. It'd be this, it'd be that, oh, I'll kill him in two rounds, I'll do this. If I, if that version of Israel shows up to fight me, that version of Israel, that version, that version of Israel. I'm like, I mean, right. it's, a, it's a line with the consensus. I don't know, People... but like, it's funny how like my, you know, opponents and stuff would like to say, oh, that version of Israel. If that version of Israel, I'm like, well, you understand who I am then, which is good. Yeah, exactly. They understand who I am, so yeah. I just find that funny. Even me, like this, you know what I mean? After the period fight, what did I take? Like two weeks before I even said anything? I like to take my time with things. I process things. Win or lose, I take my time. That Pereira one was fucking huge, so I had to like take my time to just go through everything, process everything. And just, yeah, I'm good with time, I'm good with patience. So that's why even now it's taken so long before I've done this interview, just to like take my time, go through my own emotions and process everything. Looking back, uh, how was your training camp leading up into this fight? And are there some things that you could have done differently? Yeah, definitely. Um, that's what I mean. I had some conversations with myself. And I'm gonna actually like, huh. just little things, little things. Like for example, I'm gonna start having breakfast before I train. Like little things like that. I'm like, okay, at this level, you have to, even though I, you know, the the camps, they, they get better and better, more dialed in with things I do. But then now I'm like, okay, bet. We've had this result. So what else can I do to change to better myself? Certain things I'm going to do and yeah. With everything we talked about, you being active and whatnot, when do you think people will see you back in the octagon? We'll see. <laughs> do you care who, who holds the belt? Nope. The belts never matter to me. Like, I, I mean, it does obviously, but like how many times have I said, it's just a fancy TR that brings more money and this and that, right, right, right. But I've gone to the level now that the belt's just a nice accessory. And I already got belts, I got many belts. I'm just gonna do it again. 
just for fun, just for fun, you know. And the last thing, um, is there anything that you want to say to your fans and supporters, mm. the real ones? The real ones. Stick with me, kid. Um, to be honest, you know, like I said, those who know me and appreciate me, thank you. Thanks for sticking by me. Thanks for, yeah, just thank you. Because without you guys, I won't be able to do what I do. Without you guys, like the real ones I'm talking about, like you know who you are. The ones that are solid, the ones that take inspiration from my stories and my triumph. Even in my losses, they've taken inspiration from my life story. So thank you guys. I really appreciate you. And again, patience. Practice patience with me. Don't react, respond. Take your time. Let them, let me cook. Let me cook. But um, yeah, just thank you. That's one thing I can say is thank you because, you know, in these times, like, bro, last time I lost, what happened? I said they still call me champ. Nothing changed. I won the belt again. They called me champ. Nothing changed. I lost again. They still called me champ. Nothing changes. I'm Israel Adesanya. You're Israel Adesanya. You know me. You know, you know my story. So thank you. Thank you for supporting me and keep supporting me. If you want to help out, feel free to. Like, don't let the door hit you on the way out. Appreciate you. But... Um, yeah, just stick with me, practice patience, and wait for the response. All right, appreciate your time. You know who it is, the realist. Grab my new merch at engageind.com.